Good morning everyone. Today we are going to begin with unit 4 that is memory management. So this is the first session on the memory management unit 4. So first of all you need to understand what is a memory. Memory is used to store data and it is used in the operating system. So when we are looking at the introduction of the operating system, when we are studying about that, we have already discussed uh, what is a memory and uh, how many types of memories are available in operating system. So there is a primary memory, there is a secondary memory, there is a cache memory, RAM, ROM. Why so many types of memories are available in operating system? Why there is not a single uh, memory? Why these all are not implemented under a single memory? See, a user needs a large memory to store the data. So, so much large memory is there that much more data can be stored. So, always the user needs large memory. So, so where he can store large number of data. And user is also expecting the response from the system fast. So, response needs the access time from the system must be fast. It must be uh, fast so that the user can uh, get what he wants from the system and other the user's expectation is that the unit per cost so whatever the costs are there of the memory costs are there it must be less so that uh, there can be more number of memory less cost and also the response from the system must be fast so this is what the user expects from the system so can we implement this all these all uh, three important criteria in a single memory that is size of the memory, access time that is response from the system and per unit cost. See, uh, let us take the example to search. Suppose uh, there are thousand students. Now if you want to search any particular student from a thousand student, it's very difficult. So it takes a lot of time means uh, the process is going to be a little slow. Same case if there are 10 students and we want to search any particular student from a 10 students then we can find out that student very easily. The response time will be fast that means it is a slow, it is a fast process. So always to search anything in a large memory is going to be a little difficult and slow process. Same way to search anything in a less memory uh, is going to be fast. So this is the user what it needs. And uh, obviously, both things cannot be implemented under a single memory because memory must be also large and the response must be also fast. So, this is the reason we cannot implement this in, in a single memory. And per unit cost must be also less. So, if you try to increase the memory, then obviously again the cost also increases. So, within a less cost, uh, we want the more number of memory to be used. So this is the criteria which cannot be done in a single memory, cannot be made in a single memory. That's why we have here different various memories. There is a secondary memory which stores large amount of data and it is a permanent memory. We can carry the data from one place to another place. And uh, examples of secondary memories are like hard disk, pen drives and um, hard disk are implemented inside the operating system. And uh, primary memory, primary memory is a limited memory, small memory and uh, it is a temporary memory for time being it is used and if we shut down the system then it will, whatever is allocated means it will erase the data, whatever is stored in the temporary memory it will erase. This is not in the case with uh, secondary uh, memory, everything will be stored there even if you shut down the system. So this all criteria we need to and one more memory is there, cache memory. So cache memory is faster than the primary memory. So in a cache memory, the data which you access frequently, such data will be stored there. So that the response from the system will be fast compared to the primary memory. So like this way, to meet these all three criteria, we need here different memories. So that we can fulfill the demand of the users. So memory management, it is functionality of an operating system which handles or manages primary memory and moves processes back to between main memory and secondary memory for execution. So whenever any processes has to be executed, so processes can be whether you want to open a file, 
whether you want to copy a file or whether you want to work on any application everything uh, which you want to execute is treated as a process so such processes has to will be stored in the secondary memory so such processes has to be brought up from secondary memory to main memory for execution so because secondary memory is a large memory so whatever you are storing everything will store in the secondary memory and when you want to open it or when you want to work on it then it will be brought up to the main memory because main memory is a limited memory and to work anything in a limited memory is fast and very easy so the cpu will directly interact with the main memory and execution will happen memory management keeps track of each and every memory location regardless of either it is allocated to some process or it is free so in operating system memory management will keep the record of everything which process is using which resource and how much memory is allocated to them and how much memory is free these all records will be kept in a operating system it checks how much memory is to be allocated to processes it decides which process will get memory at what time so even this will be decided it tracks whenever some memory gets freed or unallocated or correspondingly it updates the status so whenever any of the processes after finishing the execution releases the memory then how much memory will be free and for which process we can allocate it further and what is the current status this all information is needed so requirement of memory management is real relocation so that is whenever the process is wants to be executed has to be brought up from secondary memory to main memory and wherever there is space is available that space must be allocated to the processes so that they can execute so we call it as relocation or protection so when one process is executing no any other process should interfere in between so whatever the memory is allocated to that process only that process will execute that and sharing is there and how the processes how the memory will be shared among multiple processes and then logical organization and physical organization so logical organization is what the secondary ad, that is logical address will get translated into physical address and when that address is translated into physical address then the cpu can execute that next is address binding so address binding is nothing but mapping between whenever the process has to be brought up from secondary memory to main memory so when a particular process goes into the main memory which location it is going to occupy what is the address of that memory what is the starting address and what is the ending address how much space it is going to use so that is a address mapping whenever the process has to be brought from secondary memory to main memory so in other words a given logical address is mapped by memory management unit to a physical address so this is the diagram see this is the secondary disk and then we have memory main memory and then cache memory we have have here memory management unit which will translate the logical address into physical address so the cpu is going to interact with the physical address whatever is there in the main memory it is going to execute so the logical address must be translated to the physical address so that the cpu can execute so the address which is available in this is called as virtual address so binding of instructions and data to memory so under this address binding we have three stages that is compile time load time and execution time so compile time is like process will reside in memory at compile time that means so whenever the processes are compiled they will get the starting and ending address they will get the base address that is where they are going to go in which location of the memory they are going to go and execute so this information the processes will be having during the compile time that is take the example of a confirmed train ticket now suppose if you have purchased a confirmed train ticket you will get the information like on which date you are going to travel 
at what time and by which train and the seat number so this all information you will be having but uh, still you have not traveled it but you have the prior knowledge that in advance you have the knowledge that what is the situation on during that day so same way here here the process is known where they are going to go in the main memory and which location they are going to use uh, which is the base address and the ending address this all information they have during the compiled time next is load time so load time is what uh, now suppose uh, the compile time during the compile time we already come to know that what is the base address and end address where the process will get executed but while loading the process into the memory the loader will give some means some other information will be provided that some specific spaces are available at particular location and your process size is uh, like 500 mb and you can fit into that location in that memory and you can execute then that memory will be allocated to that then when that memory is allocated then again the address of that process will change now so that means it will it will get here now relocation address will be because it is relocatable now so relocatable address will be added with the base address here so what will be done here relocatable address will be added with the base address and then when you add this board you will get here the physical address and then the cpu can execute that particular instruction so it is like take the example uh, flight ticket now when you purchase a flight ticket you know the details like uh, arrival time traveling time and departure time this all detail you know but you don't know about the seat location so what is the seat location whether you are going to sit at the window side at the left side end so these all details you don't have so when you reach at the counter and when you get the boarding pass then only you'll understand what is the uh, seat location same way here when the process is goes to the memory management unit and looking at the situation wherever the space is available they will be given a new re relocatable address so that it will get added with the base address and they will get a physical address so that they can go to that physical address and they can execute execution time binding delayed until run time if the process can be moved during its execution time from one memory segment to another so this execution time is like for example suppose uh, you are traveling in the on the in the flight and uh, you are sitting at a old lady beside a old lady and a one girl comes and uh, ask you to she says that you are sitting beside my mother can you exchange the seat with me so if you have no problem you are going to exchange the seat with her so she will sit in your uh, place and you are going to sit in her place so even this we call it as execution time this is based on the situation current situation so this is not already allocated so based on the current situation wherever there is space available so at run time the memory will be allocated will be exchanged if some of the processes don't have problem and then they will get executed cpu generates logical or virtual address for an instruction data to be fetched from ram the logical address undergoes translation by memory management unit or address translation unit in particular the output of this process is appropriate physical address of the location of code or data in ram so dynamic loading so what is a dynamic loading so dynamic loading is in the memory management unit we find out the loaders so loader's job is to uh, load the processes from secondary memory to main memory and it is going to load only those uh, units or the modules whichever are necessary so now suppose there is a program and there are uh, 10 units so that program means that process is going to occupy a more number of a large memory so from that program you want to execute only unit 1 and remaining all is unnecessary so only unit 1 will be loaded into the main memory and remaining unnecessary it will not executed so this is what a dynamic loading so only whichever is needed only that will be loaded in the main memory and will be executed mainly means 
only that address will be translated into physical address and it will get executed so this is done because there is a ram is a limited memory and it has to be utilized properly that's why if you bring the large processes in the main memory then all main memory will be occupied by that single process so that's why the memory must be utilized properly and distributed among all the processes for execution so whichever part is necessary only that has to be loaded into the main memory and not the full process so the remaining part of that process will be available in the secondary memory only only the main part will be loaded similarly even this is linked to the dynamic loading this is what about linking now suppose if you are executing a unit 1 of process 1 and immediately if you need a unit 2 then it will be dynamically linked to that unit 2 and you will be brought up to the main memory and wherever there is a space in the main memory there it will store and it will get executed now suppose uh, libraries take the example of the standard c library in a c library there are a lot of uh, library stored various input output uh, devices information like scan of all files print of all files and various files are stored in that so for whenever i writing c program for every c program you use the header file stdio.h and you not use the remaining header files like math.h or iomanic.h because you don't need that so if you want to accept the input and print the output stdio file is needed so only that library will be loaded into the main memory and remaining like math.h h or iomanic. header files okay this is not loaded because it is just unnecessary Uh, usage of memory when it is not needed so when you performing some mathematical calculation that time uh, you can use you can also load the math.h or you can also link your execution that is your program means the memory location with that another unit which you want to execute overlays overlays are also part of dynamic loading and dynamic linking so keep in memory only those instructions and data that are needed at any given time so needed when process is larger than amount of memory allocated to that allocated to it so implemented by user no special support needed for operating system programming design of overlay structure is complete so already this facility is implemented inside the operating system no any special support is needed so if the process is large process size is large and memory which is allocated is less then it cannot be executed so you bring only those part which is necessary for execution which is needed logical and physical address so always the memory will be divided into the blocks so suppose this is a memory and the memory is divided into the blocks and so every block will be given for the processes to store and execute so this is block 1 this is block 2 this is block 3 so like this way the blocks will be assigned to the processes where they can execute so similarly this is a block of the memory and which is given for that process so block 1 block 2 block 3 and 4 so these blocks are given to that particular process and these are instruction numbers these are instruction numbers or you can say logical address which has to be executed now this logical address uh, will get added with the base address and you will get the physical address and then this process will get executed so from this process if you want to execute only only this is needed block 1 then only this block 1 is loaded into the main memory this remaining blocks are not loaded so the blocks or wherever that information is stored only that will be loaded into the main memory and remaining will be not loaded when they are no, uh, needed at that time dynamic linking or dynamic loading will be used and with those will be again brought up to the main memory those will be again brought up to the main memory for execution Now next we'll see logical and physical address. Now as I to already told you, 
the logical address will get translated into physical address so logical address has to be get added with the base address and then you can get the physical address so cpu generates logical address and is translated to physical address to access main memory a process is brought up from secondary memory to main memory for execution and storing some address in contiguous manner that beginning address is called base address so whenever you want to translate whenever the system wants to translate the logical address to physical address this two information is necessary that is relocation register and limit register so in relocation register the base address of process is stored and in a limit register the size of that process is stored so this information is very important to translate logical to physical address so this is the diagram which is implemented in the memory management you need for mapping of addresses translation of addresses so cpu generates the logical address this is nothing but the instruction number which the cpu wants to execute and now it must be added with the base address and then you will get your physical address now it will get executed in the main memory so base address is stored in this relocation register see in this diagram they have given both limit register and relocation register in this limit register the size of process will be stored and uh, in this relocation base address will be stored now suppose the cpu wants to execute the instruction number 100 and the size of the limit register is that is the size of the process is like 500 then it is compared here both are compared so this instruction number must be always less than the process size then only it can proceed further otherwise such uh, execution of the processes will be trapped here so now the instruction number 100 is less than the process size 500 condition is true now it will proceed further now this instruction number will get added with the base address now suppose in this relocation register the address base address is 1500 so now this both will get added here and it will generate the physical address so this is the physical address where that process will get executed so at instruction number at location 1600 this instruction will get executed so this is how the logical address is translated into physical address now here only if the condition is not true then such processes are treated means such execution of instructions are treated as illegal this is the another diagram where the base is given and here base plus limit now now let us see this example now in this example they have given three columns this is of limit register relocation instruction number and from that you need to generate the physical address so now you need to consider first instruction number which the cpu wants to execute so the cpu wants to execute the instruction number 450 so this has to be compared with the limit register see it's for size of the process so size of the process is 500 that means 450 is less than 500 450 is less than 500 so condition is true now this instruction number will get added with the relocation so that is base address plus instruction number so this both will get address so this both will get added and you will get the physical address so that is 450 plus so the base address is 1200 and the physical address which you get is 1650 so this is a legal uh, requirement or legal ex execution because the limit register instruction size is less than limit register so consider the next that is first consider the instruction number cpu wants to execute the instruction number 300 and now check compare it with limit register see it is less now here instruction number is greater when you compare so here 
you can say here the 300 is greater than 275 now as it does not satisfy the first condition so it will not proceed so the, you can you are going to say this is an illegal request this is a, this is an illegal request and it cannot be executed so you may ch uh, check next that is the instruction number uh, 210 CPU wants to execute compare it with the limit register size of the process as it is 210 is less than 212 condition is true now it will get added with the base address so it is now base address is 880 plus 210 instruction number so you will get here the physical address 1090 now check for the next instruction it is a 450 first compare with the limit register see 450 is greater than 420 so you cannot it is treated as an illegal cause it does not satisfy the first condition so it cannot proceed and it is an illegal request so the address cannot be translated here now check for the next instruction it is 80 compare it with the limit register now 80 is less than limit register so first condition is fulfilled now it is going to be added with the base address so our base address here is 200 base address here is 200 and the instruction number is 80 so the physical address is 280 like this way how the logical address will get translated into physical address and from this physical address we will understand in which location of the memory of a main memory they are going to execute which memory they are going to occupy in the physical memory that is primary memory and then they will get executed so whenever the translation the mapping of the logical address to physical address happens then only when they get converted into the physical address then only the processes will get executed so in today's session we have seen the address binding mapping of the logical address to physical address and the compile time load time execution time then remaining topic we will see in the next session thank you